They share similar specs, similar prices and are both sold via flash sales. The A6000 Plus and the U Euphoria share a lot on paper. But which one should you go for? Which would give you the better value for your money? Well, let's figure that out. But before we do, if this is your first time here or in case you just can't remember, my name's Ash, this is C4E Tech and you're watching my comparison video of the Lenovo A6000 Plus with the U Euphoria. Let's get started. As always, let's start with the build. Lenovo's gone for an all polycarbonate build here while the U Euphoria sports metal all around with a plastic back. Both back covers are user removable and inside we have dual SIM card slots, a micro SD card slot and user replaceable batteries. 2300mAh on the A6000 Plus, 2230mAh on the Euphoria. It's worth noting that while either SIM slot on the Euphoria can support 4G, only the first slot on the A6000 Plus does support it. The other slot is restricted to 2G only. The A6000 Plus weighs in at 128 grams, meaning it's a good 15 grams lighter. It's also narrower and shorter than the Euphoria. It's great given that both phones sport similar size displays and Lenovo's managed to even fit a set of capacitive keys. Not backlit though, that sucks, but they have managed to fit capacitive keys in here while keeping the phone shorter and narrower. But that being said, the A6000 Plus's plastic build comes across as a bit generic compared to the Euphoria. I'm not saying the Euphoria is a miracle in metal, but love it or hate it, the metal and the Saturn rings to the back do give the Euphoria a certain character that I feel the A6000 Plus sorely lacks. But then again, beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder and looks are definitely dependent on perspective. So I can see how someone could prefer the A6000 Plus here since it's lighter and more compact. I'm gonna leave this one down to personal preference and move on to the specs underneath. Both phones are powered by the 64-bit Snapdragon 410 chip. That's four Cortex-A53 cores clocked at 1.2 GHz each, coupled with an Adreno 306 GPU and two gigs of RAM. Both phones have 16 gigs of internal storage and surprisingly both lack the support for USB OTG. I don't have any call quality issues with either phone. While the audio via the internal speaker is louder on the Euphoria, the audio via the earphones is much better with the A6000 Plus. Now let's get to the display. Both phones sport 5 inch 720p IPS LCD displays giving them an equal pixel density of 294 pixels per inch. The Euphoria uses Gorilla Glass 3 for protection while the A6000 Plus doesn't. The display on the A6000 Plus is also a fingerprint magnet. But then again, the colors on the A6000 Plus are more accurate. The viewing angles are also better. The display on the A6000 Plus also has higher brightness levels leading to better visibility outdoors. When we get to the battery, again we have similarity. Both lasted for about 9 hours on a looping video playback test. The A6000 Plus did last about 15 minutes longer, uh, but then again that doesn't make a huge difference. With standby times, uh, again it's, it was similar, both were pretty good when it came to handling battery drain while idle. With day-to-day -day usage scenarios, both phones got me through a day on a single charge with moderate usage at most times. So far, both the Euphoria and the A6000 Plus have been neck and neck without either taking a clear lead yet. But the ne next aspect we look at should break the trend. Camera. Both the Euphoria and the A6000 Plus pack 8 megapixel rear cameras. With still images, the picture shot with the A A6000 Plus turned out a little better. Comparable details, but better color reproduction and more importantly, better processing. And again, under low light, the A6000 Plus held its lead. When it came to video though, surprisingly the A6000 Plus could only shoot in 720p and really bad 720p by the way. The 1080p video shot with the Euphoria turned out much better. There's almost no competition, whether it came to stability, stable frame rates, whether it came to the amount of detail in the images, the sharpness, the Euphoria was just the better video camera here. With the front cameras, again the Euphoria's 5 megapixel front shooter managed to do better than the 2 megapixel shooter on the A6000 Plus. As far as the UI goes, with both the Lenovo A6000 Plus and the U Euphoria, there's quite a lot of functionality, including filters, different modes, etc. While Lenovo chooses to hide them inside the settings menus, they're a little bit more easily accessible with the Euphoria. But at the end of the day, both user interfaces are quite functional and do get the job done. Anyway, moving on, we get to the software. 
While the A6000 Plus runs on Android 4.4 KitKat with Lenovo's Vibe UI on top, the Euphoria runs on Cyanogen OS 12 built on top of Android 5.0 Lollipop. Unlike most manufacturer skins, Vibe UI on the A6000 Plus is quite fast. There's no app drawer here but Lenovo's included a lot of their own apps and they work quite well. It's also worth noting that since this is KitKat, Lenovo uses the menu key here. Vibe UI also has some cool features like swiping from the edges to switch the wallpapers and also includes themes. But that being said, Cyanogen OS 12 on the Euphoria does feel faster. It also has more themes for customization and feels more responsive. Apps open up quicker. And while that gives an edge to the Euphoria, there are a few quirks like the proximity sensor issue that we talked about in the full review uh, that do weigh the Euphoria down. To sum it up, I'd say the UI on the Euphoria is faster, but the one on the A6000 Plus is more stable. But then again, we'll have to take into account uh, scope for future updates, and as far as that goes, Lenovo doesn't have the best track record when it comes to updating its smartphones. Cyanogen, on the other hand, does. So, with that being said, we now get to the price, and the Euphoria is priced at 6,999 rupees and is available exclusively via Amazon.in. The A6000 Plus is priced about 500 rupees higher and is available exclusively via flipkart.com. So, which one should you get? What's the better deal here? Well, let's break it down. With the A6000 Plus, what do you get? You get a lighter and more compact phone, a better display, a better still camera, and a more stable UI. On the other hand, with the Euphoria, you get a non-generic looking phone, Gorilla Glass protection, much better video recording, a faster UI with scope for updates, and all at a cheaper price tag. Me personally, I would go with the Euphoria here because I give more weightage to what it does better. But what would you do? Do you agree with my choice? If you were asked to choose between the A6000 Plus and the Euphoria today, which one would you pick and why? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And with that, we get to the end of this comparison video. Hope you liked it, hope you found it useful. If you did, do give this video a thumbs up if you didn't vote it down. If you have any constructive criticism, do let me know in the comments below. Feedback's always welcome. And please subscribe if you haven't already. By the way, if you do want to help the channel out, do consider changing your Flipkart or Amazon links to the ones with our affiliate code. The links can be found in the description down below under where to buy. So I guess that's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this is Ash here from C4E Tech. Signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.